Hello and welcome to another episode of Interviews with Hyperpolyglots at Hypea. I, Dr. Smart Chuhan, the president at Hypea, am very excited to welcome today's guest, a Hypea member from Bosnia, Natasha, for an interview about her hyperpolyglot experience. Welcome, Natasha. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm really excited about this interview. So am I. We just had a lovely chat before this recording. So first question is always, what, how do you say your last name? How do you pronounce it? Palachkovic. Palachkovic. Welcome. You are... Sounds great when you pronounce it. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Um, the first question is, tell us how many languages you speak. So I like to say that I speak nine languages because I am able to have a conversation with native speakers in any of those languages without, without any problem. Like I can talk as we talk now. Uh, of course, I don't speak each one of them equally well. I speak my native language the best, which makes sense. And some of them, I would say that I speak my native language, English and Spanish and Brazilian Portuguese are like my top ones together with Czech because I uh, used to live in Czech Republic. Then there are a few languages that I still need to work on. It's Albanian uh, and Greek. These are my weakest points, I guess, because I started learning them just a few years ago. And then there is Russian where I believe that I have amazing accent, but I sometimes like vocabulary. And that's it. So I would say I speak nine. And of course, my level of proficiency is different in each one of them. That's amazing. Um, now, the profession which you are engaged in does not fit in in the stereotype of hyperpolyglots because we often have interpreters or a diplomat or a teacher or something like that. So People what is with your... <laughs> so, uh, given uh, your profession, tell us about it, and uh, how how often do you use all the languages you speak in your profession? So, uh, thanks to my profession, I have traveled a lot, and I think that's the best thing about it. And while I was traveling, I I think I met people from all continents, and I used all languages that I speak. But I have to say that when you work as a model and when you travel somewhere and you go to these modeling apartments or modeling agencies, there are two languages that you use the most. One is Brazilian Portuguese and another one is Russian mm -hmm. because half of the models are Brazilian, other half are Russian and Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. So I think that I use those two languages together with English, which is like logical choice that you uh, first start speaking when you meet someone new. So English, Brazilian, Portuguese, and Russian are like top three languages that I can use uh, for my profession to communicate with my colleagues. And all the others, I, I use them on daily basis because I have friends from different countries, but I wouldn't really tell that you use that much. For example, I don't use Albanian when I work as a model. I don't use Greek. I don't use my native language because there are not that many people speaking it. So top two, like Russian and Brazilian Portuguese. I learned so much about those languages thanks to modeling <laughs> or thanks. Well, that's fascinating. You see, part of the magic of Hypea and part of the statement of this show is to show the audience that there are no stereotypes in our community. We're an egalitarian community and we come from many different walks of life, social classes. Exactly different ages. You know, there's somebody applying right now who is 99 years old. 99? Really? Yes, yes he's using wow. help to apply. He's using some help to apply. But he mm -hmm. literally does. I mean, he's been, I got testimony to prove, you know, IP is always about the testimony. Yes, he is 99 years old. And yes, he is a hyperpolyglot. And the youngest is nine years Seven. old. She joined. Nine. Nine? Nine to 99. What? Now I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, similarly, there's a you know sufficient number of men and women. I mean, there's enough diversity, yep. and and different economic backgrounds, different everything. So we want to break those stereotypes. And I think you offer a wonderful example. So when you joined, I was told that you are a model. I was like, that is a wonderful thing because that I understand that your field is. Diverse. I mean, we see all those documentaries about those young models and they're from everywhere and they're stuck together in the apartments, right? Yeah. 
what you're describing makes makes sense. And I think it's very good for Hypia to have your kind of diversity. What is your opinion of Hypia from what you have seen so far? I think it's great that you are uh, connecting hyperpolyglots, but at the same time you are doing these interviews and putting them on YouTube so uh, everyone can see that in order to learn a, few, uh, a lot of languages, you, you don't need to be uh, studying them at university or you don't need to be an interpreter. You can actually be anything. You can do any job, but at the same time you can dedicate a little bit of your free time to learn something and when people see how diverse we all are we are as you said we are of different ages we are coming from different countries we do different jobs i think it, it can even inspire people who, uh, to learn new languages they might see me and then say look at this model if she managed to learn nine languages <laughs> i can learn one or so <laughs> but so that's because I, we have a stereotype towards models i mean i think it's a credit to you to smash that stereotype too. Models yeah. aren't dum-dums. They're not. Well, they are. <laughs> Sometimes they are. Okay. <laughs> um, but by the way, a few models who speak like five or six languages. Oh, uh, we'll get them to apply then. They should be part of the community I too. Bring you new people. Mm -hmm. So you are like a recruitment, modeling recruitment <laughs> person. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, Tell us more about the, the modeling experience around the world and the use of those languages. So the, what is it like in the real life? Tell us some stories. In real life, I feel that I made uh, much more friends thanks to the fact that I can speak their native language. And not only in modeling, when I was living in Czech Republic, I was studying there and also I had part-time job as hotel receptionist. So that was another thing where I use those languages. And I feel that when you speak with someone in their native language, uh, you get to connect more with them, even though both of you speak English. You still, so I think that I have uh, great friends that I still talk with, thanks to the fact that I I approach them speaking their native language. And I also used to help to few really young models who had their first trip abroad and they were coming from, I don't know, from Brazil, for example, they couldn't speak English. And then they meet the girl who speaks their native language and can actually help them with their um, experience in a new country. Hmm. That's a wonderful way to use your languages to assist other people. You probably yeah. made somebody's life a lot easier doing that, didn't you? Exactly. And they also made uh, my language experience better because they, I always say, tell them to correct me if I'm saying something wrong. I think that's the best way to actually learn and much more interesting than just sitting with the book and dictionary and learning everything by heart. Yes. But did you study any languages in that manner didactically with the dictionary and the book? Did you do that? So I did it with English because I started learning it uh, when I was eight or nine. That was subject in school, so I kind of had to. And then I used to learn German also, which is the language that I don't speak. I just have weird chemistry with German because every time I start learning it, I, I can understand a lot, but I just can't speak. So that was one language that I learned that way. And I had the same experience with Italian. I learned it in high school and also with Czech, because when I moved to Czech Republic, I was attending Czech course for, uh, uh, for uh, foreign students during one year. So these are uh, languages that I learned just by sitting and doing this grammar exercises that you have in every book. But I have to tell that it made me realize that learning languages on my own is much better for me. Okay. It works much better for me than just going to school and attending classes. It gives me more freedom and I can do it my way. I don't need, I hate when I have to do something right now. Like you have to sit and you have to learn. I don't like that. I like to do it, you know, in my freestyle. <laughs> hmm. Yes, actually we find that sometimes a balance helps. Sometimes you need to learn a little bit in the old yeah, school I way, but it's much more fun to use it in real life. And in a dynamic context like you did, where there's young people and they need help and you want to help and you want to have fun, yeah. this is the best way to learn. That was the purpose of language, right? And you don't even feel that you are learning. You are just talking with your friends or you are listening to, I don't know, to music or you are watching a movie. That's something that you would do anyway. But when you do that in foreign language, you just don't feel that you are learning. It's just part of your life. 
That's very true. And um, how has the coronavirus pandemic affected your work, one, and how has it affected your um, language learning or use? Well, it affected my work in a really bad way, I guess. I'm not the only one. I think that most of industries have the same problem and most of the people have the same problem. But when it comes to language learning, I think it helps me because I have a lot of free time to study the old way, as you said, with the book and with grammar rules and so on. So uh, I spend a lot of time on YouTube listening to all the languages that I speak and making them better, improving them. I think that YouTube is actually one of the best things for people who, who want to learn languages. And together with internet, everything on internet is great if you use it in a good way. So, but at the same time, it's, uh, I cannot meet many of my friends because we are all in different countries and you don't get to travel that much right now. But I speak to them as I use, as I do now with you. Mm. So again, thank you internet for <laughs> making this uh, quarantine much easier. Yes, imagine if we had this crisis, this epidemic, this pandemic, uh, like uh, 30 years ago. <laughs> or so, yeah. It's so hard and so boring. What would we do with our time, right? Yeah, exactly. But we would have books and maybe if this was 30 years ago, if I was born 30 years ago, I would probably be sitting with a book and learning new things. But this is much funnier, I think, much easier. Yeah, yes, sure. Now, in, in your profession, uh, you get to travel so much. Is there a favorite place that you went to? And is there a place that you dream of going to? So I dream of going to South America because I love Spanish. I think that I told, uh, I wrote it in the first interview that I gave to Hypia, the, the written one. Mm. I told that the sexist language is Spanish. So if I could go somewhere right now, I would probably go to Mexico or maybe Argentina also. So this is, but they are not looking for that many models. They have beautiful people there. <laughs> yes. I lived in Buenos Aires for two years. It's true. Really? Yes. How was it? Uh, it was the best time of my life or among the best times of my life. Um, I like uh, Argentine Spanish. Yes, well, it's I, very distinct. It's very unusual. You have to get yeah. used to it. And it's, it's kind of Italian in some things, so it's beautiful. So that would be my dream, to go there. And from the places that I have visited, I would say that the most fascinating one was India. Although I don't speak Hindi and I don't speak any like of the languages that are spoken there, except for English. But that was, it's completely different than everything that I visited before. And even if you travel the whole world, when you come to India, you are still surprised. Yes. It's pretty fascinating country. Yeah, that's very true. Well, in the pandemic, I think that would probably be the worst place to go. You really have to wait until this pandemic goes away. It's yeah, very bad. I'm happy back there with all this pandemic. Well, it's the worst situation you can imagine. It's terrible. So yeah. it's tough. I hope there. they can. Absolutely. And um, did you mention your favorite place in your travels? Yeah, yeah, it's the most fascinating one. I don't really have favorite place hmm. because I'm interested in many languages and many cultures. So you don't really get to choose just one. And I think that all the places that I have visited are so different that you don't really compare. You can't compare some country in Europe with Asian country or with South American country because the, all of them are interesting in their own way. Mm, that's true. Um, I have questions about your profession, which I can learn from you as a Hypea member. My first question was about the linguistic diversity, which you already answered, which was that <laughs> it's a lot of Portuguese and a lot of Russian because it's a big concentration. Yeah. The second one was about the competition for succeeding in your profession because there is a star, superstar distribution. So a very few number make the most amount of money or get yeah. the most amount of attention. And Instagram's contribution to that. You know, how do you deal with this question? How do you see the competition and the Instagram effect? I think that when it comes to competition, of course, there is some competition, same as in every profession. But I think that most of the people have really... A weird and exaggerated way how they see models because we don't really hate each other that much. Mm -hmm. We are usually great friends and I know that it sounds like something that every model is telling in an interview yeah. but 
I, I met uh, many more friends that than I met. We don't really, we are not enemies. We are not gonna break each other high heels before the fashion show. We are not gonna destroy each other cosmetics. Sometimes we do gossip about each other. That's true. Mm. Um, we do that. There is an uh, interesting theory about this. There is a theory that language emerged in the very beginning, just so that we could gossip. This may have been the very purpose of language. So, yeah. hey, I saw your husband with that woman at that time over there to communicate this info. Oh, really? Did you see him? This may have been <laughs> the original purpose of language. It's a very strong theory now. What do you think? I think it's great for me that I speak two main modeling languages, Portuguese and Russian, so they cannot gossip about me because I'm going to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to be hidden somewhere where I cannot hear them. Now, do you plan to continue your language learning journey with new languages? Uh, I do, but the problem is I cannot decide which one to take next. So I have... I have option of German because I somehow feel sorry that I dedicated so much time to German when I was younger. I had it for four years in school. Then I went to three months language course and I still don't speak it. So I kind of feel that I wasted my time and it's for nothing because I cannot, I'm not able to communicate in German. So that's one thing that I would like to like seriously start learning it again. But this time I hope it's going to be successful. Mm. And one more thing, uh, I was concentrated mostly on European or languages spoken in Europe. And when I started traveling as a model, my first destination was Asia. And I kind of felt that I ignored Asia for such a long time. I don't speak any Asian languages. And I feel it's, it's bad, actually, because it's really interesting continent and really diverse one. And I don't speak any of those languages there. So I would like to try, my first idea was to try Chinese, Mandarin Chinese, but then people told me that one is too, too difficult for you, start with Korean or start with Japanese. So I don't know if I should really start with some of those. I'm not familiar with Asian languages at all. Mm. And I feel bad. Mm, sure, well, there's some that are a lot easier than others. One that's very easy is Indonesian Bahasa. It's a very big country too. And its grammar is made simplified so that the whole country could speak one thing. It's actually very mm -hmm. simple. As opposed to Chinese, you know, I've done it. Studied in China, did my master's there. I lived in Japan also. Those are very, very tough. Like I dedicated a big part of my 20s to doing that. <laughs> and now I feel a little bit like you do about German. That, you know, I worked so hard and now I don't use it. And so I've lost it. And I feel like a, a butthead. I feel awful about it. So, so which yeah. one is... Japanese or Chinese? No, oh, they're different. So Japanese is, um, is, is the three scripts. That's the first hard thing. Um, <laughs> then, it, uh, then its grammar is not difficult. Um, so it's mostly yeah. that the writing. It's, it's the hardest thing to write as Japanese because you have to know three different systems all the time. Um, yeah. Chinese is, has no grammar per se, but it has a real memorization role, just like Japanese. So, and it's tonal. So your tone as you move up and down can change the meaning of what you said and that kind of thing. It me a lot because I really don't want to get embarrassed. And also mm. I don't speak on a language. So I think that would be the most difficult thing probably. Mm. Well, I bet you're a very smart person. So you could do it. It just requires hard work. None of these were difficult. It's just some require harder work for Hypea members. That's our attitude. That, it's so all possible book and learn it in a traditional way yeah. instead of on YouTube and watching things. That's true. And it depends how long the pandemic is. If you really have so much free time, you may just start it to, to get through the time. If I started last year, I think I would be able to speak either perfect German or I would be able to communicate in Chinese, like at least few sentences. Hmm. <laughs> it's certainly true because this pandemic is becoming longer and longer and you see people's mental health is being affected. It's tough yes. out there. You know it better than I do. You know, my job requires me to sit and think. I can sit and think all the time. Easy. Mm -hmm. So there nothing changed, right? No, because I still don't think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yours is a real, you see, it's a big cyclical effect in modeling, for example. 
and I was expecting this pandemic to be like for one month. That's why I haven't uh, tried to learn German or Chinese because I was thinking, okay, it's just one month. I'm gonna take rest. I'm gonna watch YouTube videos in languages that I already speak, but then it lasted one year and it's still not over. So maybe I should just try to start something. You are in lockdown right now in Bosnia, correct? Uh, well, it's not lockdown anymore. I think that it's it's getting better. Situation is much better. Mm -hmm. But you reside in, in Bosnia right now? Yeah. Yes. And you grew up there, then you went abroad for a long time, and then you came back. How is the culture shock, reverse culture shock, when you come back to your country after seeing so much? How does that feel? I was coming back to Bosnia even when I was uh, living in Prague, even when I was traveling around. I always, I have family here and I have two dogs and the two dogs are the main reason why I come, come back actually. <laughs> uh, so I used to come back every year for like two months or one month, depending on how much time I have. So I was always uh, in a contact with Bosnian culture. And uh, the only, th the hardest thing is uh, Bosnia is a really small country. All cities are small. Uh, there is no diversity here. I cannot, we, there are not uh, foreign people living in Bosnia because we are not really interesting destination to live. Oh. So I can go to bar or to coffee shop and meet people from different backgrounds and speak with them in their languages because there are no people from different backgrounds. And I think that is the thing that I miss the most. And that's the biggest cultural shock because when I was living in Prague, Prague is a really international city. Mm. There are people from all around the world and I used to go, uh, there was one event, language related event, which is called Speak Easy. It was organized every, uh, I think every Sunday, every week. And you go there and you speak with people from all around the world in their native language and they help you and you help them. And I used to enjoy that a lot. I think that I learned a lot thanks to that. And then when I was traveling to different countries, I also used to meet uh, people from all places in the world. And now when I'm in Bosnia, I cannot do that. So this is the biggest shock for me, actually. God, I understand this problem. Um, but you, should, you might be happy to hear that I've always thought of Bosnia as a fascinating country. And after this <laughs> pandemic, I may come to visit Bosnia. So come say hello to you. Really. You, are, you, you. will be welcome. And be our tour guide. Oh, that would be my honor. You you honor me with that, having a, a supermodel tour guide. How lucky can <laughs> anybody be? But the truth is, it was always fascinating. Its history has had many different layers. I read a lot about the history of your country from the uh, from many different authors and stuff, including statesmen. And there's it's very intense. It's very powerful. It's also very beautiful. But it's not a romantic fairy tale. It's up and down, and that's what makes it interesting. No. We had a lot of hard times in Balkans, and I'm real. I consider myself lucky because I don't remember uh, the hardest times back in the '90s, in the early '90s, when we had war and all this going on. I consider myself lucky because I don't remember that. Mm, yes, in a sense, you're lucky to be coming of age at a later time, but. Yeah. That pain is also part of making a rich history that we all have to appreciate. Me as an outsider, you as an insider. And that's why I really want to visit. This is not a joke, and I'm not just trying to be nice. I really do plan on visiting. Always yeah. been on my mind, yes. Have you been to Balkans already, or...? Yes, I have. I went to party in Belgrade in 2016 twice with friends from Finland. Party in Belgrade are great, right? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. You, you've seen that river with the boats on it. That's mm -hmm. cool. yeah. I did that. And then I went to Macedonia randomly, but I met wonderful people in Macedonia with all its big outrageous statues in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, capital city is really, it's weird, but funny at the same time, exactly because of those statues. They are like everywhere. Yeah. On every single square, there is a statue that looks like it was made yesterday and it's just put there. <laughs> Exactly. A big part of their budget has actually gone to keeping those statues. So I think it's very funny. Uh, and I had a nice time there. But I, oh, and I've been to Croatia um, uh, twice um, to enjoy the nature, uh, just to get a break from things. So Croatia what's missing, the Croatia is beautiful. So what's missing is Albania and Bosnia, uh, basically. 
Yeah, we are going to be like the cherry on the cake, on the top of the cake. Yeah. The Save best it. you last. <laughs> exactly. Save the best for last. That's right. I did the easy stuff before. I did uh, Croatia first. <laughs> yeah, now it's Bosnia and Albania. Both are really tough countries. So you are going to get, <laughs> you have to get prepared. All right. But mentally, I really do want to start traveling again. I have not moved out of Islamabad since 2019 December and that was also to go party in Istanbul for a week so mm -hmm. I, I've been very condensed also and because my mind is like that introvert I may be studying languages I might be writing my book it's fine but yeah. even a, a little snail in a shell like me finally needs to come out so. yeah I'm also an introvert even though I did job which requires you to be more extrovert and so but real me is real introvert and I sometimes I like being alone. I like being away from the people for some time, but this was too long. And I, I told that when, uh, when you see introverts wanting to go out and socialize, you can see how desperate situation is. Exactly. <laughs> because people want to go out. Exactly. <laughs> and right. you. This has been such a lovely introduction to you. And Natasha, you add to the diversity in terms of your personality, your profession, your energy to a uh, rich fabric of IPA. So on this happy note, I want to thank you and I want to invite you in advance for a future interview at, on IPA. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I will be happy to do interview with you again.